this is a workshop titled Capitalism at a Dead End, or Is Capitalism at a Dead End? That's my subject for the panel, to elaborate on that idea. And I'm speaking to this issue from a revolutionary activist point of view, and that's why we want to promote this idea that capitalism is reach, has reached an impasse in its development and the broad arc of capitalism going forward is to drag society down. Even if it comes up a little bit, goes down, comes up, goes down, the long arc is to reduce the condition of the working class and the oppressed people in this country and around the world and to grow mass unemployment gradually or precipitously, but steadily. And that's going to become a permanent condition of capitalism. Now, we say this not because we have a crystal ball. We've studied a little bit about the recent evolution of capitalism, and we've detected certain changes when I said that I'm st presenting this from the point of view of a revolutionary activist, it's hard to think about it in the immediate, because this has been a non-revolutionary country for quite a while. And just so that everyone knows that we're all living on Earth and we, we're not in outer space, we know that this country has got a very non-revolutionary background, especially since the 1930s, after that, and going forward. So what we assert, really, is that there are changes that have, capitalism has undergone s slowly, gradually. Uh, the, the system has been transformed mainly by technology, and that these changes that, have un that are, has undergone slowly have finally accumulated to bring it to a critical stage, a sort of a turning point. The question is, why? Is this true? And if it's true, why is it? It doesn't take much to illuminate the fact that this is an extremely severe capitalist crisis. That four years into the, since the crisis has taken place, there are still officially 13 million people unemployed, officially 23 million people unemployed or underemployed or dropping out, and probably around 30 million people when you figure out who's not counted and help the way they manipulate the statistics. Perhaps, you know, a quarter to a fifth of the workforce, which is about 150 million people. And the obvious destruction of public education, social services, uh, benefits, pensions, wage scales, speed up, the, the entire experience of the working class has been changed. It's been it's subjected to extreme conditions, and that is continuing. I would like to just open this from a, a, a theoretical and practical point of view by just quoting the first quote in the book itself. And it's a quote, not from me, it's a quote from a man named Alan Sinai, who's a very well-known economist and always quoted and he's a Wall Street person. Quote, American business is about maximizing shareholder value. You basically don't want workers. You hire less and you try to find capital equipment to replace them. That's the horse's mouth. <laughs> the, it, it, he's from a, a Wall Street consulting firm. And what he says is true in a way. There's a, there's a side to it that's not true because no capitalist can make a profit unless they're exploiting a worker. So there's a, there's a, a side to it that 
we won't get into a dispute about. But what we do want to point out is that what he does isolate is the motivation of each individual capitalist is to reduce the workforce, okay? So when we say this is a severe crisis and this is a turning point, the question is why? Why is this such a severe crisis? No one really has answered this question in the capitalist establishment. In the Marxist movement, people have described it very, very well. But there are not that many answers to why this is right now. And I would like to go into this. These changes that have been taking place have changed capitalism in such a way that they threaten its very growth as a social and economic system. There have been 10 crises since World War II, economic crises. Every one of these crises has brought about terrible unemployment, but every one of these crises, the capitalist system has emerged from it to employ the previously employed workers who were laid off and to employ more workers and to expand production robustly. That's the only way they re-employ the workers is that when the business comes back, they need more workers to exploit and they begin rehiring the workers who were fired during the, the downturn. That scenario is over. It's not going to happen. It's not happening even though there may be a cyclical upturn here and there. No, we're not saying that inventories don't get liquidated and bosses do need to replenish those inventories because they have to have stuff in their inventory in case they have a chance for a sale and they can't miss that chance. So they, re they replenish their inventories and there can be a little uptick in employment. But it doesn't change the long trend. 